What place crosses your mind if I showed you this? As a matter of fact, this is the birthplace to the indigenous Kalabits. Sitting approximately 1,200 meters above sea level, it is located in the heart of Borneo. We had the opportunity to visit here for 3 days 2 nights. In this video, we are going to show you our experiences at the Kalabit Highlands, also known as the land of a hundred handshakes, Barrio Sarawak. Hello everyone, today we are going to Barrio and we are going to board the small twin otter plane which only is accessible to rural areas so let's see how it goes. There are two common ways to reach Barrio, either by flight or rugged logging road. The latter uses a four-wheel drive vehicle which takes roughly 10 to 14 hours depending on the weather. While we were on our flight to Barrio, we were lucky to have witnessed the beautiful Batulawe Stone Peak. Not long after that, we safely landed at Barrio Airport. We just arrived in Barrio and right now we are on our way to the homestay. And the flight itself wasn't that bad. It was like less than an hour So we just left the airport And I can tell you The air here is very very cool After the bumpy ride We arrive at the Balamatu homestay This is where we will be staying for the next 3 days 2 nights Our room for 2 felt like a cabin and it was quite cozy Lunch was already served when we arrived And most meals were prepared during our stay here Also the foods here are mostly prepared using fresh resources from the land itself. How was the barrio rice and pineapple you might ask? Well, they were flavorful. Alright, so we just finished having our lunch. And right now we are just resting at the homestay. Because our tour guide is not here yet. And while we're at it, we went and explore our homestay the scenery here is really breathtaking we are surrounded by mountains and this is like the center of the mountain and as you can see this is where they grow their coffee crops and then over there it's like the pineapple crops I don't know you can see over there, just underneath there. So yeah. Alright guys, so roughly after 10 minutes of driving, the next step is to traverse by foot on land if we want to visit the salt spring. And just to make sure, if you have a hiking shoes, please wear it because some parts are there are very muddy, so keep that in mind. By the way, this is our tour guide, Paul Anis, who also happens to be a local content creator based in Barrio. We had Paul to help lead us throughout our entire trip. We just arrived at the salt spring and it's starting to rain. And this is how it looks like. It's just a wooden factory. This is where the natural salt spring is located. Even in its unrefined form, you can taste the saltiness of the spring. Allow me to brief the salt processing steps. A bucket is dropped into the well to be filled up, then transferred into bigger pails. 
From there, it is poured into these metal drums where it will be constantly heated until it crystallizes. The salt crystals are then filled into bamboos where it is further burned to be dried and solidified. Finally, the salt is cleaned and packaged in plastics or leaves. It is highly recommended that you visit here when they are processing the salt to get a better understanding of the whole procedure, as we were unfortunate to not witness it live. After we were done, we headed for our next destination. This is the Barrio Asal Longhouse, which is the oldest and longest longhouse in Barrio. Stepping into the longhouse, we felt welcomed by the long hallway, also known as Tawa, which is most often used for ceremonies and gatherings. Along the side displays portraits of the families who once and still live here. Portraits of historical figures and community leaders were also displayed. Somewhere along the hallway, we passed through a narrow corridor which had private rooms and living spaces. They also serve as a connector between the Tawa and the Tal, which is the kitchen area. Moreover, this longhouse is also a homestay for those who wish to experience authentic Kalabit hospitality. Alright guys, so we've arrived at the Wen Chapel. It is a renewed monument to commemorate a highly significant event. Just like its name, it feels quite windy up here. On top of this wind chapel, there's also this cross. Apparently it is aligned with the one on the prayer mountain. So it's quite fantastic. And that sums up our first day of activities. Speaking of Prayer Mountain, Hiking up the Prayer Mountain was our first activity for the day. We made arrangements with our tour guide, Paul, to hike up early in the morning as we tried to catch the sunrise. Be prepared as some parts of the trail were quite steep too. Good morning everyone! So, we woke up around 4 in the morning today to come and trek Prey Mountain. We're already almost reaching the peak because earlier this morning there wasn't much light so we couldn't take a proper vlog. But yeah, now we're almost near the peak and I will show you the peak later on. Right before the peak, we passed through a wooden chapel. We are currently about 1,200 meters above sea level, and it's harder to catch your breath as the air gets thinner. The cross is in sight. <sighs> Alright guys. Finally at the peak of the prayer mountain. What an astonishing view. It's like a notion of mist covering the town. This prayer mountain was erected in 1973 during the Great Barrio Revival. Ever since then, many have climbed up here to pray. There is also the Pulong Tao National Park, which is further west of the peak. After spending some time atop, we decided to hike back down and head to the town center. Whilst on our way down, the whole forest was surrounded in mist, which looked really cool. It was a Saturday where the weekend market is open and the town is lively. Since Barrio is such a small town, 
everyone seemed to know each other. While we walk around town, we can see warm smiles everywhere. There are lots of local products that can be found at the market here too. We also tried out the Barrio Laksa for breakfast. What makes it unique is its pineapple sambal. And of course, it was delicious too. Before showing off the next part, here's a brief history about World War II in Barrio. On March 25, 1945, eight British and Australian men parachuted into the Barrio Calabit Highlands to begin an onslaught against the Japanese army occupying Borneo. Led by Major Tom Harrison, they were members of the Voluntary Z Special Unit participating in a mission codenamed Samut to establish initial contact with the indigenous people of Borneo train and deploy them as guerrilla troops against the Japanese forces. We are at the Barrio Memorial Park for the 78th anniversary of the Z Special Unit landing here in Barrio and the ceremony is now ongoing. We'll see how it goes. The ceremony was joined by locals, some government officials, book authors and Australian descendants to pay tribute to the more than 2,000 soldiers and other heroes who played their part in the historic landing on March 25, 1945. Through this ceremony, we learned something new about Barrio, a part of its history which not many have heard of. Learning and preserving this history is important, especially for the younger generations, us included. We should feel grateful for the sacrifices of those who fought and gave their lives in the past. You can find more of these from the book Memoirs of Z Special Unit, authored by Jenny Saw. With the ceremony done, we headed for our next stop, which was the plane wreck. This is the plane wreck of the Scottish Aviation Twin Pioneer, which was operated by the Royal Air Force back then. And the history is that the plane landed on a wet runway and skidded so once the plane uh, skidded it crashed but luckily no one on board was harmed and they all got out safely so now this is just its remnant which just sits here in Barrio just beside the plane wreck there's also an I love Barrio sign if you want to take photos because right behind us is just the mountains and it looks fantastic actually if you want to take photos Paul then led us to visit a local farm where various plants are grown these were mostly cultivated by Mr. Tom who owns and works on the farm Next, we stop by a local traditional shop where it sells traditional handicrafts such as necklaces, traditional headgear, waistband, sashes, and so on. These are often used in ceremonial rites, rituals, weddings, and Irau Mekang Adan, a name-changing ceremony, a special event to affirm a Kalabit couple's transition to parenthood after their first born. Our final stop for the day was the Hanging Bridge. The purpose of this bridge is to shorten the travel distance between two villages back in the day. Before going to the airport, we dropped by Teripun Hall to take a quick look. The two peaks of the roof that you see is meant to symbolize the Batu Laweh stone peak, which you can also see when coming to Barrio. There are two main exhibitions in this hall. The first one is the Cultural Rainforest Exhibition, which shows the interactions between people and rainforests in the Kalabit Highlands alongside nearby areas. The second one is on the second floor, which is about the contribution of Tom Harrison to the Sarawak Museum and his first contact with the Kalabits. Unfortunately, we came at the wrong time to the museum because we cannot access the 
exhibition hall on the second floor to see more things here because it's on a Sunday and most of the Kalapit people have gone to church to pray so if you wish to visit here then I suggest you contact the local people here to open the hall for you but the hall itself is carved with very unique designs if you can see So right now we are heading to the airport and we have Mr. Nawan mm. who is also the owner of the Balamatu homestay. So if you guys want to come to Barrio, please feel free to contact Mr. Nawan. We'll link, we'll link the Facebook in the description so do check it out. We then took the morning flight back to Miri which marked the end of our barrio trip. Throughout this fleeting experience, we learned so much about barrio. The scenery all around barrio was wonderful with cool weather. The local delicacies were unique and tasty as well. Exploring the different places of interest, learning about their culture and history. The best part about this trip was the limited phone network here meant more interaction with the people. We got the opportunity to listen to stories that we would have never found elsewhere, not even in the internet itself. The hospitality from the locals here were one of the best too. We highly encourage you to visit Barrio and experience firsthand everything that the Highlands has to offer you. This is why we keep pushing ourselves to see the world in second perspective. To venture out, discover and experience new things. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.